Now we can start taking these clothes back at the character creator. And to do that, all we have to do is import in one of the FBX templates, bind our clothes to the armature, and then F export that back out as an FBX. Now, since we're exporting FBX files, that's also going to export out some materials. So as you can see, I've also set up the materials to load in the textures that we created before. So let's import in that template. I'm going to go to File, Import, FBX, and go into our body templates. And I'm just going to select female.fbx. That's the template that we have to bind our clothes to. So let's do that. Now I'm going to select all the clothes uh, and the hair mesh, except the earrings. We're going to do something a bit different with that. Select all of that, select the armature, and I'm going to hit Control P, and select Armature to Form. Now what this does is that it gives us some armature modifiers, which means that it's bound to the mesh. Oh, sorry, it's bound to the armature, but it doesn't follow along yet because it doesn't have any skin weights. If you look at the, the vertex dex groups, that's completely empty. And if you try moving the armature around, the clothes aren't going to follow along. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the skin weights from the body and transfer them over to the clothes. So I'm going to demonstrate on this shirt over here. Select the body, and I'm going to select the shirt, and I'm going to transfer over into weight paint and I'm going to press this transfer weights over here. Now it gives us one vertex group, but that obviously that's not what we want. So down here in the options, I'm going to select for our source layer, I'm going to select by name. And that should transfer everything over. Now, if we select our armature and move this around, yeah, there we go. It should now be properly bound to that mesh. Oh, sorry, the armature. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do that for all the other pieces of clothing. And now all of those weights have been transferred. And if you look over here, so if I bend this knee, there we go. If I bend this, the boots and the pants will follow along now. And all the clothes will follow along with that armature. And now for those earrings. For the earrings, we don't want to bind it to the mesh. We just want it to parent this to the head bone so that character creator will read it as an accessory instead of cloth. So to do that, I'm just going to select the armature over here. And in pose mode, I'm going to select the head bone. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to select the ears, uh, the earrings. And I'm going to shift select the armature. I'm going to turn off that body just to be able to see this better. There we go. Earrings, shift select the armature. And now the head bone selected, I'm going to hit control P. And parent to bone. Now. Now if I move that head around, the earrings should follow as well. Now, if you're lucky, that is to say the clothes that you made were skin tight, that's all you have to do. But obviously over here we don't have skin tight clothing. We even have this bag. And if we animate this, uh, I actually added in some animation to this armature, we can see some problems arising with the skin weighting. And if something like this happens, well, you have no other choice but to manually paint the skin weights. So here's how I do manual weight painting inside Blender. I switched over to the weight paint mode and at the bottom of the 3D view, I pressed the button to turn off limit selection to visible. So now my strokes can punch straight through to the other side of the mesh. I also turned on auto normalize in the brush window to the left. Here I've selected a bunch of vertices and turned on vertex selection masking in the weight paint mode. 
Now my strokes will only affect the selected vertices. The brush I'm using is the Add Brush, set to a low strength value. This allows me to add influence to a bone little by little. Let's skip ahead to the pants. It's mostly the same process as before, and I'm mostly using the Add Brush again. With the Auto Normalize turned on, it will automatically lower the weights of the other influences depending on how much you add to your selected influence. Now I'm selecting a bunch of vertices again, but this time I'm going to use Smoothen the Weight tools to the left. And here I'm just trying to get rid of the penetration problems in the knees. Okay, so those skin weights are fixed now. If, as you can see, if I scrub through this timeline. And now it's time to export everything as an FBX. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything except for these bandana meshes. I found that including them with the export of the FBX causes uh, import failures inside Character Creator, and I think it's because since they're bound to the head bone, Character Creator reads both those meshes as hair meshes along with the, hair, the actual hair mesh. So that could cause a conflict, I think. So now that everything except the bandana meshes are selected, I'm just going to export all of that as an FBX. Now, here are the settings that uh, I want to use. I'm just going to, in this main tab over here, I'm going to check selected objects. For geometries, uh, I'm not going to change anything there. For armatures, this add leaf bones is checked by default. You want to turn this off. And in animation, since I added in some animation, I'm going to turn off bake animation so that no animations are included. So I'm going to save this out as clothes bind.fbx and I'm also going to export the bandana meshes individually so I'm going to select the armature, the body, eyes, teeth, and tongue everything that came with the, the FBX template and I'm going to select the bandana straps and export that as an, that as an FBX And I'm going to do the same thing with the main portion of the bandana.